Colorectal cancer is an exactly exciting dinner conversation, but the alarming fact of the matter is it's on the rise in young adults under 50 and has been for years. And doctors say people as young as 20, so that means millennials, Gen Zs, you need to know the warning signs. Welcome to Healthy Living, wellness and prevention, medical innovation, the informed side of care. Welcome to Baptist Health Talk. Hi everyone, I'm Joanna Gomez coming to you from the Baptist Health Newsroom, joining us to talk about why this concerning trend is happening, knowing the warning signs and more, our colorectal surgeon, Dr. Victor Maciel from Baptist Health and radiation oncologist, Dr. Youssef Zaydan from Lynn Cancer Institute at Boca Raton Regional Hospital, part of Baptist Health. Thank you both for being here. I can't wait to dive into this great conversation with both of you, but before we do that, we wanna make sure that we remind those watching right now to send in your questions in the comments. We are here for you and happy to answer any questions that you may have. So Dr. Zaydan, I'm going to start with you. I just said it is alarming to hear that it is getting younger and younger when it comes to colorectal cancer. What are your theories of why this is happening? Great question. Yeah, indeed, we've been seeing a steady increase in the rates of colorectal cancer in the younger generation. Today's statistics say an alarming 13% Mm-hmm. of colorectal cancer cases are diagnosed in those individuals 50 years or younger. While there are no direct explanation of why we're seeing this uh, sudden increase in the younger generations, I believe it's a combination of factors rather than one single factor. For example, obesity and sedentary lifestyle, um, those are on the increase and those have been directly tied to colorectal till cancer risk. There are other lifestyle related factors such as smoking, tobacco Mm. smoking, and uh, alcohol consumption. Those are very well known risks for colorectal cancer as well. Also diet is very important. Mm -hmm. There is a direct correlation and a direct risk establishment between the kind of diet and the risk of colorectal cancer, particularly for example, diets that are uh, rich in red meat, processed meats, Uh, Those have been shown to be a risk factor for colorectal cancer. Uh, On the other hand, more healthier diets like uh, diets that are rich in fiber with the fruits and vegetables, those have been shown to be more uh, productive. Um, Of course, there are also some genetic factors, but those ones are one is born with, they cannot be modified really, um, that run in families when we see colorectal cancer running in families. So the short answer is this is still under investigation. We don't know, but I believe it's a combination of these factors rather than a single factor. I mean, the good thing from what you just said is that we can (laughs) actually do something to help us Mm -hmm. with this, like have a healthier lifestyle, which is the most important thing that you just said. Dr. Maciel, I hear early onset a lot. What does that mean? Can you explain to us? Because we are here to educate and to learn a little bit. <laughs> early onset, as Dr. Sidan uh, mentioned, is the cancer that is diagnosed on patients younger than 50. Uh, but what we've seen and worries uh, us, uh, healthcare practitioners, is that the early onset is happening earlier and earlier. And that's why it's so important to participate in education of the public and um, the preventive measures that we that we can offer. Okay, so pardon my ignorance, but I hear colon cancer, then I hear colorectal cancer. Is it the same? Are we just? What does it mean? And is it is it two different things? And that's for both of you. Um, Let me start. Colorectal cancer is grouped in in one single category okay. because anatomically is one organ, but functionally is very different. The treatment of colon cancer tends to be mainly surgical as opposed to the treatment of rectal cancer, which falls more in the specialty of Dr. Sidan. Mm-hmm. Um, Yeah, I agree. And uh, basically, it's very important when a patient gets diagnosed with a colorectal cancer to know exactly where in this organ this tumor is arising. Um, As Dr. Maciello said, uh, the management differs if the tumor is arising in the colon versus in the rectum. So roughly, we refer to the rectum as the last part of the colon or Mm -hmm. the last, the last 15 centimeters or so before the anal canal. as the rectum, Mm -hmm. um, and the treatment for that part 
of the organ is different from treatment fr from the colon. So it is very important when one gets diagnosed via a colonoscopy and a biopsy with a colorectal tumor to know exactly where is this arising from. Is it arising at the beginning, the middle, Got or the it. end of the organ? Okay, so it's <clears throat> really just one <clears throat> big organ that Correct. you both look at mm -hmm. yes. uh, and to see where things are happening. Mm -hmm. Now, colonoscopies are not fun. No one wants to talk about mm -hmm. it. It sometimes makes you a little embarrassed when you talk about it. But we've had a lot of celebrities like Ryan Reynolds last year. He was leading the way when it comes to emphasizing the importance of getting a colonoscopy and getting screening. He shared a clip of him. I, I don't think you both would be that uh, <laughs> <laughs> sweet to share your we'll colonoscopy see. procedures, but he did. We're gonna go ahead and play a clip so you can see it. Take a look. You did such a good prep that I was able to find an extremely subtle polyp that was on the right side of your colon. Mm. This was potentially life-saving for you. I'm not kidding. I'm not being overly dramatic. I, I mean, it. It, this is exactly why you do this, okay? You had no symptoms. Yeah. All yeah. right, man. Okay. Yeah. I'm thrilled for you. Thank you so much for this. Seriously, thank you for pushing me to do this. can't believe you pumped all that aviation gin into my IV. <laughs> So as you can see and hear from that short clip that we just showed, a quick 30 minutes gives can, as Ryan puts it, literally save your life. So why is it so important for us to get a colonoscopy? But really, at what age? I am 45, so should I be making an appointment yesterday, as they say? <laughs> Yes, uh, so I totally agree with the clip and with Ryan Reynolds. Uh, a colonoscopy, which is really a very safe procedure, very quick procedure, can save lives. And um, recently, the recommended age from 50 was uh, moved to 45 because of what we mentioned at the beginning of the program, the cancers are being diagnosed earlier. So the soonest you can have your colonoscopy, the better chances you have of preventing a cancer. So what happens during a colonoscopy is you get your prep the night before, you, uh, that cleans the colon, and then the endoscopist perform a colonoscopy under sedation. Now, the preparation that we had many years ago was um, you had to drink a lot of volume and it was uncomfortable. The preparations that we have now, they are much better tolerated. Mm -hmm. So even though you mentioned it's no fun, of course it's not, but it's not as bad as it was. Then the sedation techniques that we have these days are also better and the patients are very comfortable, completely um, asleep. There's no pain associated with the procedure. And the trade-off is that if you find polyps in the colon, uh -huh. the endoscopist has the ability to remove those polyps and therefore cut the cancer progression on the butt. It's, it's actually uh, interesting when you say that because I think a lot of times people hear polyps and they automatically get scared. Right. But it, it's, it's, that's, um, that's what happens at times. And right. that's where it, it's actually the science is working for us because you can actually prevent it from getting worse, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Absolutely, and and that is where the science of of colonoscopies is. It's the de early detection. The earlier you detect a a, pre a polyp at a precancerous stage, the less invasive the intervention is. Even if it's a cancer stage, the earlier you pick it up, the less invasive and the less toxic the treatment uh, is. So I totally agree, get your screenings done. The recommendations now um, start at age 45, if completely normal, repeat every 10 years. Um, if a polyp is taken, then probably it's this time frame is gonna be sooner than 10 years, okay. three or five years. So right. you, you mentioned okay. early onset, and I, I just wanna get back to that. Why is it that it's so aggressive when it's mm. early onset? Do we, do we have a theory so, for that? Um, let, me, let me clarify a couple of things. Sure. Uh, the screening at 45 is for <laughs> average risk individuals. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we recommend earlier is starting uh, to screen for patients that have an important family mm -hmm. history of colon cancer. Okay. So please make sure that you talk to your medical uh, care provider to decide when you are due for a colonoscopy, especially if you had symptoms or family history of colon cancer. Now, the second question, the aggressiveness of, of the tumors that we're seeing on younger people. Um, it is a fact they are more aggressive and they're uh, diagnosed at 
later stages. So that's why we are wanting to catch them earlier by moving the, the screening five years earlier. Right. The reason why they're more aggressive probably has to do with the genetics and the biology of the tumor that we don't understand fully. But there's research ongoing, and by obtaining a little piece of that tumor, uh, we can get, we can understand it better, and therefore offer a tailored approach to that aggressive cancer on a younger patient. So prior to the colonoscopy, the night before, you have to prep. Yes. I think that's what a lot of people fear, mm -hmm. that prepping, that uncomfortable. How important is it to prep properly for yes. this? Very, very important, um, especially if, if this is your first colonoscopy and you're looking for small polyps, mm -hmm. you have to have a very clean colon for the colonoscopy to be successful. But again, the prep that, use, that we use these days is a lot better than the prep that we use every, you know, even 10 years ago. Okay. Dr. Zidane, what are some of the warning signs that we should look out for as we are getting older and living life and anything that we should just be aware of? Okay, yeah, great question. So some of the uh, early warning signs um, that one should be alerted for to get a checkup are blood in the stools. Okay. So unfortunately, this sometimes gets confused with other conditions like hemorrhoids, yes. but this could be one of the early presenting signs of colorectal cancer. So that's number one. In fact, some of the screening tests look for blood in the stools, so the so-called fecal occult blood test or the ColoGuard mm -hmm. test is another term for it. So um, I do favor colonoscopies though, because with colonoscopies, you can do intervention and screening. Another alerting sign is change in bowel habits. So uh, somebody who is regular, all of a sudden tends to be getting extreme diarrhea, extreme constipation, bowel habits becoming irregular, that's another alerting sign. Um, also change in the caliber of the stools can be an alerting sign as well. Uh, abdominal pain can be one of the worrisome signs. Although these signs can alert to colorectal cancer, however, we've seen cases where none of these signs could exist and yet the patient is diagnosed with either a precancerous or a cancerous uh, tumor um, at the time of a screening colonoscopy. And then again, goes back to the fact of how important to do uh, on time uh, early screening. One other sign I also have to alert for which sometimes we see is unexplained anemia or iron deficiency anemia mm -hmm. um, wow. that we can't find any other explanation that's also uh, can be correlated to colorectal cancer as well. So. Again, the importance of talking to your doctor, getting the screening done at an early phase. You, I'm going to go back to just one thing that mm -hmm. you said, because I'm curious about this. You said regular bowel movement. What is, doesn't regular mm -hmm. look different for everyone? Regular mm -hmm. bowel movements uh, is different for everyone, yeah. but a drastic change okay. in what your normal is. Mm -hmm. um, to start with, if, you, if your bowel habits are very out of the norm, you should be seeing uh, a gastroenterologist or a colorectal surgeon. Um, but if you're if you are having bowel movements within the range of what is expected for for a normal adult, then a drastic change in that pattern should alert you to something something's wrong that needs to be investigated. Okay, so now let's have some answer some questions that we have researched. These are the top research questions that we've seen on the internet that people are just curious about. So, is colorectal cancer curable? It is. Uh, for the majority of the cases, it is uh, curable. And uh, it obviously depends on how early you catch it and, and the stage at, uh, at, that you're treating. And therefore, I emphasize even more, and once again, the importance of early screening so you can catch the colon cancer at a treatable time. Uh, absolutely. So the, the again, the staging and catching it at an earlier stage for example, uh, we, when we catch the tumor, when it's still localized just to the confined to the organ, right. our rate of survival at five years is about 90% plus, which is excellent. When things start spreading to the regional lymph nodes around the organ, then our chances of survival at five years drop to about 75%. And in the cases where it's stage four, it has metastasized to other organs, then our survival rates at five years drop drastically mm -hmm. down to around 15%. 
Um, so again, the, the earlier we diagnose colorectal cancer, the better the chances of uh, having a better outcome. Uh, you actually mentioned about <clears throat> patients have seen no symptoms. That is a question mm -hmm. that a lot of people are wondering. Mm -hmm. There's patients that have seen zero symptoms, but they have mm -hmm. been diagnosed. Why? Mm -hmm. A good question. So again, the we get that question a lot from patients when they're diagnosed, why did I get a colorectal cancer? Uh, the answer to that is there are risk factors that we know about, such as the ones we discussed at the beginning of our discussion, you know, things related to lifestyle, things related uh, to um, uh, genetics that we don't understand. And there are some other risk factors that we really don't know about and we're still under study. So it, it's really a combination of factors that we know and factors that we don't know. There are some modifiable factors, as we mentioned, that are related to lifestyle. And these are factors that one could take control of early on. Okay. Uh, this question is for both of you. There have been so many advancements when it comes to diagnosing and treating colorectal cancer. Have you seen there's been a big growth in the field? Absolutely. In my field in surgery, um, there has been incredible improvement in the techniques in the in the latest uh, 10, 20 years. Uh, specifically for what I do, the introduction of robotic surgery for colorectal cancer has been a game changer. We can uh, perform very complex operations with minimal invasive techniques that translate into less pain, faster recovery, and less risk of complications without compromising the oncologic result. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's uh, a great time for the management of colorectal cancer. We're seeing great advances in the past decade. Uh, some of the greatest excitements in the field of oncology for colorectal cancers are biomarkers, uh, particularly, for example, today, with a drop of a blood, we can detect circulating tumor DNA in the blood of the patient. And this is being studied for early detection, wow. but also for guiding the management of the colorectal cancers by medical oncologists in particular, in order to know whether a specific patient still has circulating tumor DNA and needs more intense systemic therapies, or a patient is in complete remission and we could wait. So that's one field. Also with the biomarkers, now we're able to get to the nitty gritty of the genes and the proteins of the cancer cells. And that has been proven very effective in guiding what we call, what I like to call smart systemic therapies or targeted therapies that are completely different from the systemic chemotherapies and more specific to the cancer cells with way lower side effects and much better efficacy. So that's another field that is um, evolving. Uh, also in colorectal cancers these days, some patients can avoid operative managements, particularly patients with rectal cancer, right. where uh, some patients are choosing to have non-operative management route with combination of systemic therapies and radiation therapy. And in select patients, we're avoiding um, the option of having a permanent colostomy. And that could have major consequences to their uh, lifestyle. So there is a lot happening in the past 10 years or so in the field of colorectal cancer and a lot to stay tuned for. Yeah, it sounds like it's mm -hmm. all amazing and going to the direction that we mm -hmm. really want it to go. Perfect. How important is it to have a team duo like you, an oncologist mm -hmm. and a surgeon work together and, and, and to pick the right team? I think it's paramount for the treatment and the success. Um, <laughs> as we've been talking about uh, colorectal cancer, uh, I think the audience can understand that um, a particular patient can have a particular tumor that is very specific to him or her, and therefore having an, uh, a team of experts that can see the same patient from a different angle and discussing the case together, and we can offer a tailored approach to that particular tumor of that particular, particular patient will offer the best results. And this has been proven uh, you know, around the globe. And we are very proud to offer this at, at our institution. Yeah, yeah, Baptist obviously has a lot to offer. Yes, absolutely. I agree. I mean, we are learning more and more when we discuss those cases that there are no two cases that are 100% the same. Correct. Each person presents with their own specifics, their own expectations, their own uh, quality of life expectations. So it's very important to have these multidisciplinary teams to discuss each patient's plan before the treatment starts. We've also learned the sequencing of the treatments. How do we sequence, for example, in rectal cancers, how do we sequence the systemic 
therapies, the chemotherapies, the radiation therapy, and the surgery plays an important role in the ultimate outcome of the treatment. There are patients that can right. avoid having one of those treatments, for example, down the line. So mm -hmm. it's very important to understand all of these, determine the treatment plan. It tends to be time consuming, I'll be honest, that, yeah. that uh, you know, discussing each case in detail with all the diagnostic tests, it's very time consuming on the physicians, the tumor boards to set them up and have everybody around the table. But at the end, this reflects in a better patient outcome and the patients are Absolutely. the biggest winners. So. I would like to mention as well that uh, when we are treating uh, a patient that is recently diagnosed with a malignancy, this can be very overwhelming to the patient. So uh, being part of a big institution, we have the resources to help the patients navigate through the steps. So the patients feel accompanied and, and um, helped yeah. throughout the process. So we make sure that the patients complete all the steps that need to be completed for a, a successful outcome. And uh, we do this in a very private and warm and understanding uh, way. I'm glad you have our best interest. Before I let you both go, I am curious about one thing. You could have studied anything. Why did you decide to study colorectal cancer? <laughs> and this is your field, your right. focus. Um, for me, um, the, the field of colorectal surgery offers the ability to cure cancer, offers the ability to help patients, you know, um, other fields that treat other type of cancers that are not as well studied may not be as successfully treated, but colon cancer is curable and I love giving good news to my patients after a su successful treatment. That's amazing. And now that I get to work with uh, robotic technology and endoscopy, it makes it perfect for me. Um, for me, I came to oncology in general from a research background. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be in a field where not all the answers are known. I wanted to get in a field, uh, the field of radiation oncology in particular in my case, where there are more questions than answers. So um, the colorectal cancer for sure proves to be very exciting moving forward. And I can't wait for what the future holds. No, thank you Absolutely. both so much. It was really a wonderful conversation. Your insight, you educated us. Thank you so much for your time. To our audience, remember viewers, be sure to hit that subscribe button that you see there on our channel to keep up with the latest health and wellness information and tips from our experts. Thank you so much for watching. Find additional valuable health and wellness information on our resource blog at baptisthealth.net slash news. And be sure to interact with us on our social media channels for live and upcoming events. Baptist Health Talk is brought to you by Baptist Health, the warmer side of care.